let's check in with our people. I've done a little bit of playing now. Uh, Brezza, he's almost made it to the base where Tater is waiting with the body of Kevin O. Um, Chiappi, sometimes I have to just turn them around to remember their name even if I don't read the name. It's just that action just brings the name into my mind. Chiappi. Uh, Chiappi found his second real estate location. He's been chatting with Tater. He's a little unsure about the viability of the area. He's She gave him some data which made him think, well, in his own personal experiences as well, that there's really going to need to be a lot more infrastructure in order to make this this uh, development he has in mind viable. Um, Melky, he had to go back to this area because he, if you recall, he, last time he was sitting here a lot, kept losing turns. Um, I cheated and I looked through my losers pile and I'm missing at least one person. Um, so I'm going to have to, luckily I, I found another copy of the game, but I need to go through and see uh, who's missing. Just compare it with all my stacks in order so that everyone who should be there is still, still able to be participate. Um, I have Demi sitting over here. I forget what happened to him. I know he got close to winning, but did he survive or not? So if you recall whether Demi made it out, would you let me know? I, uh, maybe it's fresher in your mind than mine if you've just watched the video where Demi either died or survived. I would appreciate that. Thanks. So Brezza and Tater have been having a nice time just kind of uh, talking at this fort. Brezza's been consoling her a little bit, trying to seize the day. Now it's time for them to move the body together. Now how that's going to work is if one of them is moving it by themselves, they are going to, um, it's going to take, it's going to split their movement by half. If they're doing it together, however, uh, it it's one less. And so, one less than the normal movement. They get to use Brezza's movement. It's going to take both of their turns to do it. And they just have to get to here. And then they've both succeeded. So here we go. Two. Brezza's got really nice movement abilities. He has no random movement. It's always just one, two, three, four. And he can change directions if he wants. One time. Five, six. I don't think he's going to. I think they're going to stay right there. Oh, no, they can only go five. One, two, three, four, five. They'll go right like that. The next turn will be a straight shot to the path. It's smooth sailing. But let's see if they got an event. Six, so they do. Two, on rescue. That's animal insect. Rescue is pretty nice. It's got even more positive things, too. Lose one food step index. So they will both lose, lose two. And should I roll another one for her? Eh, no, I think they both got attacked by some bees. Chappie's starting to get really unsure of the real estate potential of this place. Milky just entered the base where Chappie was recuperating and one of the places that Chappie needed to survey. Um, Milky, if you recall, is a space warrior and so he really has no choice but to try and attack Chappie. The space warriors don't want their presence to be known because they're planning a, an assault later. All right, so here we go. Two, that's going to do five damage to Chappie. Chappie rolls two. Um, how much damage would that do to him? I think it would do one life level. So his life level goes down one to D4. And Chappie goes down five. One, two, three, four, five to E4. The space warriors are better at fighting than a, than a real estate investment is. Chappie's trying to escape. He went over here, dug down deep, got some food um, just from from his own sense of perseverance and fear, I think, and now Melky's going to try to chase him. They're both using survivor rules. Melky got a, a good roll, though. That's going to let him change directions if he wants. So he could go one, two, three, and then change directions to this, which would make it so he stays still. I let him do that. And then he's going to attack. 
he missed. Chappy also missed. Chappy got a bum roll. He ended up randomly moving here, so he decided to double back and head towards this. But it's Milky's turn now. Five, so Milky gets full control again of his movement. And he's gonna go one, two, but he has to move the full amount, I think. Yeah. So he'll actually just beat him here. <laughs> that's, that's rough on Chappy. Whew. Brazza and Tater have made it out with the body of Kevin O. So, ended up not being such a bad excursion for Tater. She maybe found a partner she was looking for. But time will tell on that. Here we have Twigmar, yeah. I want to say Twigmar, but I always think Coonies is twi Twigmar, because he looks like a Twigmar. But that's Twigmar. And then we have Skibby. It's going to take their place. Skibby and Twigmar have both been monitoring the ham radio signals for very different reasons. Skibby, she's a member of the state, um, the most secret state intelligence organization. And so she, she heard the broadcast. Well, I don't know if it's called a broadcast with the ham radio, but the, um, the message sent out about the alien presence from, from Cabin 4 here. And she wants to make sure that that sort of distressing information doesn't leave the wilderness. Of course, she knows that there's aliens who have an interest in the state, but she doesn't want other people to know about it. And so she wants to investigate, make sure that anyone in the area that knows about aliens does not make it out. Um, Twigmar, he believes he's something like a changeling except for aliens that when... He, when he was a baby, his babyness was switched with another baby um, by the aliens. And so he would, he's been monitoring the ham radios in order to get contact with the aliens in order that they might take him to his true home because he doesn't feel like he fully belongs in the world of humans. So his goal is to meet up with an alien and get them to take him out of there. Uh, he's using the survival rules. He's prepared to come out here, but he's not super adept at surviving in the wilderness. Skibby, she's using search rules, which are pretty pretty decent, better than the survival rules. It is now Chappie's turn. Chappie, as you know, was trying to get into this, this cabin here, but Milky got there first and, and, and is waiting for him. So he's going to have to decide where to go. A lot's going to depend on his movement role. Probably going on this path would be the best for him right now. But that would require a random movement, and then, um, and the random movement would have to be in this direction. So two, and he is survival, so he can go as many spaces as he wants in one direction. Hmm. He only moved three. That's tough. That's tough. Chappie op opted just to go to base because he's worried about dying otherwise of thirst. So Melky didn't lock the doors. He wants him to come in so he can kill him. So they're going to fight now. Melky's roll. Melky missed. Chappie's roll. Chappie hit. So that is going to be one life level on Melky. That's going to take Melky down to F. Milky's been having a rough time. It's taken a few days to hit Twig, or not Twigmar, Chappie. So Chappie managed to gain a, a, a health level due to just sitting at this base. I'm, I'm assuming they take breaks to eat and drink, and so they're okay. Um, but we're going to try again. And by we, I mean Milky, and also me by rolling the die for him. And there he did it. So he's going to do three... One, two, three, so he's at the J level. We'll use this marker as J for Chappy. And it's rough on Chappy. Chappy gets to roll, and he does one to Milky. Chappy's also been radioing for help at that base. Um, 
he managed to gain another life level. Skibby's now at a base as well, so she heard that call for help, and she knows that there's something going on here, so she's gonna go down and investigate. Her, her first goal was to go here, because that's where the original um, call for help was from. But there's another one coming from here. And so there we go. Twigmar, he's making his way down the river. He's doing fine. He's low on food, but he's managed to keep himself well hydrated. So that's what's really important, water. Milky got another hit on Chappie. So Chappie's at M0. He's not gonna be able to move, but he can keep staying here and drinking water in order to increase his chances. I'm gonna say his victory condition has changed to just survival at this point. It's no longer important to him to scope out this this place. He just has to make it alive and perhaps Skibby can bring him out or perhaps some other rescuer can bring him out. Um, but his life is more important than real estate right now, especially given the nature of this place. It doesn't seem like a great, a great place to live. Skibby has just demonstrated the benefits of her training and personal fortitude and experience. She was at E4 but because of her own um, inner drive, she managed to keep herself strong so that she's ready to take on the alien menace when she gets here next turn. That's, in game terms, she got a random event. Um, personal, gain one water step in index. So that was great for her. Skibby has made it to the base in which Melky and Chappie were duking it out. I should have probably recorded the last roll of Milky's to try and destroy Chappie. It would have brought him down to zero, or to O, zero, instead of zero, zero. Um, but he didn't do any damage. So now Skibby is going to attack. She's prepared for combat, so she's going to attack on the same kind of scale that I'm using as Milky. But Milky has to strike back. So, But she's stronger. She's five to Milky's three. And so she does five life levels. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. He's at zero now, but he gets to strike back at G3. It's not looking good for Milky. And he does nothing. All right, and I guess, well, he's at zero, I don't, yeah, he can roll. Chappie does nothing. All right, and then Chappie's water level goes up, and we're going to move back to Twigmar. Twigmar, direction roll. Six. That's really good for Twigmar. He's in survival mode, so that means he can start in any direction and move and make one direction change, but he has to move the full extent of his movement. Which incidentally, I th I'm not going to talk about that. One, two, three, four. I think he's going to go to this base in order to investigate. Big roll coming up for Milky. He needs to roll a one. He does not. Um, Skippy gets to a strike back. She has another five life levels. And that's going to take Milky out. That is really harsh. And this is where constructing narratives through game systems uh, makes for a more unexpected result than it would if I were to be writing this as a, a short story, probably. Um, if I were to be writing this as a short story, Milky would hang on so that Twigmar could have some some connection with him. Um, which is not to say that Twigmar, since I can have still some narrative input, Twigmar's whole plot is left hanging. Um, it's going to depend on what character we draw. But you would kind of expect Milky coming in after the whole destruction earlier to have uh, a bit more effect than to be destroyed at this early, relatively early standpoint in the, in the narrative flow. But he's gone, Milky. He was a good one. I'll miss him. Next, you just have to move on. You can't, you can't dwell on these losses. And there is Flush. Flush was the character card I had lost. Um, and I wonder if there wasn't something in 7x7 Seven Seven Ages which said he was fully removed from the tournament. I feel I kind of have an inkling that something like that happened. 
but since I got a new stack over there, see those two stacks? The one on the right is the one I've used for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament and also um, mailed out to people. The one on the left is the newer stack. Um, I do have another copy of Flush, and so I put it back in there. I probably cheated, but that's okay. Cheating is allowed in the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Skibby's turn. I was fully prepared to do a die roll to figure out what she did now vis-a-vis -vis Chappie. Um, Chappie is injured on the cusp of death, but he knows about the aliens, and she does not want people to know about the aliens. So I was going to see if maybe she found in her heart to forgive him or for his sin of knowledge. But instead, I looked at her card, and it says she has the pet peeve of handicapped parking. I don't think she has a lot of um, sympathy for those who are downtrodden in the biological sense. So she's going to try and take Chappie out right now. Here we go. That's going to be a bullet to the head, and Chappie is gone. That's another thing I wouldn't have expected. I wouldn't have, if I, if I had written it, they would have fallen in love. But um, I probably wouldn't have written this story in the first place. Uh, here we have Destructo. <laughs> probably the aliens are going to get another person to come on the, on the table with Destructo. Some super soldier, some super decimator. Destructo. Please remember to let me know if Demi made it out alive or not. Again, I don't remember. You may have glossed over my request for help earlier due to the nature of how one might listen to these videos versus watch. Um, Destructo is coming in. It's going to be exciting, flesh rending stuff happening. Flush is coming in, leading. A group of middle school students on a field trip. Really exciting stuff coming up on Outdoor Survival. English slash Pasha Roulette 1 next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament.